Right, welcome back. And we are here now on the final segment with Marlon Espinoza, CEO of Native Caribbean and Caribbean Print Solutions. Marlon, um, during our, your, our last segment, uh, you were very vocal about a number of topics. And one, one, the one that we want to focus on now is your concept of what risk is. What risk is relative to the ridicule that you will face, risk relative to you investing in a, this new venture, risk relative to you deciding to do $40 a ticket when that was an 80s, 90s uh, thing, and uh, the average ticket now is what, 100, 150, 200, 300, and so forth. Um, how, what, what is your definition of risk relative to all that you have, 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 have just said? And how would you have managed risk based upon some of these things that you would have underwent? Boy, Darren, that's a hard question. <laughs> mm -hmm. The thing is that um, risk, risk, uh, risk, the level of risk I take is dependent on the level of belief I have in the idea, mm -hmm. right? But before I take a risk, I like to hear what other people say. Mm -hmm. And most of the times, people tell me, nah, boy, don't do that, mm -hmm. you know? So then you start to doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you start to say, well, boy, if 10 people tell me don't do it, I mean, I can't be that arrogant and think that I know everything. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it comes down to just what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I, I tell people don't risk more than you can afford to lose, but mm -hmm. I don't take that advice. Mm -hmm. So with, especially with Native Caribbean Foundation, it was something that I felt that I knew the business model, but I knew nothing about the industry. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned it took me two years to be able to come up with the business model and the concept and the philosophy of the company that mm -hmm. I felt could work. Mm -hmm. And even at that time, everybody saying, now nah, boy, you see that $40 thing you're trying to do, you can't make no money doing that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Needless to say, I proved everybody wrong. Mm -hmm. And now everybody say, will tell me, well, if somebody could make a success of it, it's you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it didn't take away from the fact that I was in a deep, 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 deep hole with the capital investment that was required mm -hmm. to get Native Caribbean Foundation off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I had to pay for all the scripts and the royalties and everything up front. That's about a couple thousand US dollars. Then I had to pay for all the, you know, based on our philosophy of it costing the, the parents and the kids nothing to be part of the organization. Every rehearsal, we provide snacks and water. Um, we had to pay for the costumes up front. We had to pay for the, the materials to build the sets and so on up front. And that is before we even sold a single ticket. So you mm -hmm. can imagine that the, almost the entire cost mm -hmm. of production, mm -hmm. with the exception of, let's say, final salaries, had to be paid up front mm -hmm. before we even sold a single ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that in itself was a huge risk. That was money that I could not afford to lose, mm -hmm. really and truly because it was money that was literally borrowed mm -hmm. from the operating capital of my existing business. Mm -hmm. And without that operating capital, that business would have, you know, mm -hmm. possibly folded. Mm -hmm. So it was a really huge risk. And um, I had to really spend a lot of sleepless nights searching my mind to figure out what could go wrong that I didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Um, the play was a success. We were able to pay all our expenses. We didn't make a huge profit, but the intention always has not been to make a huge profit. I kind of um, subscribe to the philosophy that if I make theater or the arts or the, the art form that we promote unaffordable to the public, that art form will get nowhere. And if I can't find a price, and a business model that allows me to sell a ticket to a child for $40 who is attending school, um, who may be in her parents who are not well off, and $40 is a lot of money. Um, some, parents, some, some teachers tell me the children bring $10 a week mm -hmm. to pay that $40, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the, the philosophy was not to have a successful production. Yes, we wanted a successful production. Mm -hmm. But the philosophy is to have a, a successful production that is affordable mm -hmm. to the people who would not normally have attended a show like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
it's all about working the numbers. Mm -hmm. But the risk is a very nerve-wracking, emotionally, you know, emotionally chaotic um, thing mm -hmm. when you are getting into a new venture mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, the second year was a little easier and the third year was a little easier because the business model worked and we just tweaked as we go along. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, so I would still say do not risk what you can't afford to lose. But sometimes it's difficult to take that advice when, you know, when the vision has gripped you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's not letting you go, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, um, that vision will wrestle you to the ground mm -hmm. and you have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just throw in a little thing here. There's a show called The Greatest Showman. I'm sure you know it, mm -hmm. right? And there's a song that's called A Million Dreams. And I always play it because it motivates me. I think that song was written for me, mm -hmm. right? And I tell people I don't sleep much. Um, ever since I was small, I had difficulty sleeping because when I have a thought, it grips your mind and then you can't, it doesn't let you go. And you'll wake up 2 o'clock in the morning and you can't sleep because you're trying to figure out, can this work, can this work? What, 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 what didn't I think about? So um, it's like the song says, there's a million dreams that's just keeping you awake. Mm. And that um, forces you to take that risk. Mm -hmm. It forces you to take that risk, right? There are so many people who take uneducated risks and they lose. Mm -hmm. So I did also mention that it took us two years to take that risk. Mm -hmm. And that was two years of planning, research, reading, understanding, mm -hmm. right? Really delving deep into the business model. It's about planning. It's about having um, documentation that you could go back on and say, this is, um, you know, this is the basis on which I made this decision, mm -hmm. right? So nothing great will come without a great risk. Mm -hmm. And you have to determine what is a manageable risk for you as an individual and as a person. But when the time comes to take that risk, you have to take that risk, mm -hmm. right? There is no reward without risk. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's just kind of get into how do you manage that risk now? Right? One is research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to research. You have to know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. right? And when you think you know everything, research again. And when you think you're sure, check again. And when you're mm -hmm. absolutely sure, check one more time. Mm -hmm. right? Because you need to know. You also have to, and this is not an easy thing to get, but you have to have a good mentor. And a good mentor in Trinidad is hard to come by. Um, you have to have someone who understands what your vision is. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a saying that says the vision of one man doesn't lend its wings to another. But if you have a good mentor, a mentor doesn't have to know what your business model is, mm -hmm. but a mentor could throw um, different ideas into the mix to force you to think. Mm -hmm. A mentor forces you to think. A mentor doesn't give you the answers. They just force you to think. So I've been mentoring with organizations like Kariri and YBTT for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been with YBTT for about six years, a wonderful organization. They've been doing really great work. And their mentorship program is second to none. It's one of the most robust and comprehensive mentorship programs. Um, and, as, and as with every organization, not every mentor is a great mentor. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the mentorship model is something that is very valuable to entrepreneurship training in Trinidad and Tobago at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So if you have a good mentor, it, it forces you to think. That mentor will force you to think, mm -hmm. right? And to question yourself at every step until you feel that you have the right answers, mm -hmm. right? So um, I also do what is called um, a pitch panel um, evaluation mm -hmm. with Kariri. Mm -hmm. So it's like Shark Tank. Someone will come and pitch, and we would critique. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for about five years as well. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, no salary is paid by YBTT or Kariri. And I like it that way, mm -hmm. right? Because I want to feel that I'm doing this because I love to do it, not because I'm being paid. Mm -hmm. um, I have never charged in my entire life for entrepreneurship advice, mentorship, or support to young entrepreneurs looking to start a business. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I share um, even even... I wrote a 60-something page business model, um, business plan template mm -hmm. 
and I sometimes, I intended to sell it and I give it away for free, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's all about research and taking that calculated risk. There are no simple solutions in business. They are intelligent choices, right? So if you're looking for simple solutions in order to determine whether to take a risk, you know, you're not going to find them. Those simple solutions are going to probably make you make the wrong decisions. But you have to make intelligent choices in starting a business or in running a business or in growing a business. And there are a lot of things we don't want to go into an entrepreneurship training session right now, but you have to understand what you are capable of doing, what are your resources, what time you can put into your business. You may have family commitments and all of these things, and you think, yeah, man, you know, um, I could do this. But again, sometimes you're up to your ass in alligators and you realize your original intention was to drain the swamp, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that risk management aspect is key and critical to starting, growing, or expanding a business. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what was the other topic we were supposed to talk about now? Some numbers? Numbers. Uh, what, right. Why is the maths of any business important? Right. What, is your, what is your take on cash flow projections and profit mm -hmm. and loss? It is not something that entrepreneurs take as serious right. as they should. But yeah. it is important. And right. Tell us. So entrepreneurs start by thinking very simply. I, I buy something or I make something and I sell it and I make a profit. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is really what business is. Right. You buy for one, you sell for two. Mm -hmm. um, however, inside of that is, is all the costs and all the resources required to run a business. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you have a simple business that you're making something and then you're selling it, you still have to wonder, you know, how do I live? I, I still have to live. I still have expenses. I still have to buy food. I still have to buy clothes. And if I'm, if I'm making something for $100 and selling it for $200, will $100 in profit take care of me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So you have to understand the mathematics. And mm -hmm. as I said before, numbers will whisper the secrets of the universe into your ears. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is listen. Mm -hmm. Right? And as I said, whisper, not shout. So you have to understand the numbers behind your business. You have to understand all the resources and money that it takes to operate that business. You have to understand all the money that you're making mm. and is that money sufficient? And if it is not, how do I expand and how do I get to that break-even point where my personal expenses don't outstrip what the business is making, mm -hmm. the profit of the business? And then you also have to factor in the the ability to expand this business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that it becomes sustainable, mm -hmm. right? But I want to take a little turn right and, um, and explain now that a business is not only about, cre about making money. Mm -hmm. Businesses come and businesses go. There, were, there are millions of businesses that existed 10 years ago that don't exist now. Big mm -hmm. businesses, small businesses, whatever. Businesses that do not create value mm -hmm. do not survive. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and for small businesses especially, we're not talking about the big businesses now, the corporations that have existed for 100 years. And even corporations that have existed for 100 years have died. Kodak, mm -hmm. gone out of business, Enron, whatever it is, yeah, right? Woolworths. Mm. Woolworths, whatever, mm. right? So you can find hundreds of thousands of those. But what is value and what is money? Money is not value and value is not money. Mm -hmm. and, un and until we begin to understand that, we would, we would lose the concept of what is really a, a, a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. What we do in Native Caribbean Foundation and in Caribbean Print is create value. The cost of the award is not the value of the award, right? When you give a child this award, the child is not concerned with, this is, this is made out of teak, and it, it have a gold plate on it, and there's a full color print on the plate. You know, the child not concerned with that, and it costs $300, the child is not concerned with that. Or it costs $50, the child is not concerned with that. What the child is concerned with is, I earned this. I accomplished something. Uh, this is mine. You know, this was given to me because I was the best at something. And that is the value that we create. Mm -hmm. In Native Caribbean Foundation, it is not about creating a, a model that makes money from ticket sales. Right? Yes, we have to make some money to pay the bills. 
but we shouldn't want to put a million dollars, a hundred thousand, or fifty thousand dollars in the bank afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. It is about building the people in the organization to go out there and pursue creative activities mm -hmm. as part of their lives and to understand how to make creative activities profitable. Mm -hmm. Because if it ain't profitable, nobody's doing it, mm -hmm. right? If nobody was making money by selling shows to Netflix, Netflix wouldn't have anything to show, mm -hmm. right? If Disney wasn't making money, right, by, by making movies, Disney wouldn't have a movie section. Mm -hmm. But Disney's value is not just in creating movies, it's in creating memorable movies. Who don't know Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, or even all those shows like Cinderella and all those things that Disney produced. Young people would watch somebody singing and dancing on a stage and say, I could do that. And then our organization tells them, you want to sing and, and dance on a stage like you saw it on Disney? We'll put you on that stage. And that could change your life forever. Mm -hmm. I have one young lady who is brilliant, right? She's actually um, coming back to help us with this production. And she opted not to do Cape, but to go to UTT and study acting because we forced her to be in a... She came to help backstage and we forced her to play the lead. And that was the turning point in her life. She now has a degree in acting, right? Um, we have two other people who are studying acting in the US right now mm -hmm. um, and theater and so on, right? We have the same young guy, Hosea, He's doing psychology, but doing a double major in theater, mm -hmm. right? And I saw somebody mm -hmm. who is already in the theater who is helping all of this, this play that you are coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. A young director, his name is Jelani Corby. Mm -hmm. He studied directing, and he just came back from the U.S. Mm -hmm. and this is his first job. But he actually has a, de a degree in directing. Mm -hmm. So think of what he will bring to the organization, and he's 22 years old. Mm -hmm. This is his first job, right? Real job that he's getting paid for. He's going to bring the best of what he can offer to mm -hmm. our organization, and we are giving, giving him the chance to do what he studied, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is directing, mm -hmm. right? This is what I talk about, about investing in the young people. Long after I am gone, Native Caribbean Foundation will continue to exist, and that is value. That's not money. That's value. And that is what we hope that we could train young entrepreneurs to do, bring value to your country and the particular sector that you operate in. Don't just look to make money. Because sooner or later, you'll stop making money. Mm -hmm. When you're dead, you stop making money. Mm -hmm. If you get sick, you stop making money, right? You know. So we need to differentiate in their mind what is value and what is money. Mm -hmm. And you have to have both. Mm -hmm. When you have the both of them, then you have that magic combination. And I think that's what we did in both of our companies. We found that magic formula to create value mm -hmm. and to make some money doing mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, we have a lot of, of, of um, you know, other plans to create value. This studio that we are in, and I must say that, you know, when we, the studio was in our mind for about two years, and then when we thought we were doing this interview, we said, let's fast track. Let's put out a little money and get the studio ready instead of just talking about it. And here we are. This is our very first recording in the studio. But it's not going to be our last because now the young people can use it to create content that we'll be streaming on our dedicated, um, our dedicated channel, mm -hmm. right? So this is a huge vision, right, for them to be able to come here and create and run the station so that they could, they could create programming for all demographics, right? And in so build a little business model where we could, once we have the following, we could attract some advertisers and again, create value for our advertisers. And they would be supporting something that is real and good. And, you know, we, um, we are just continuing to use Native Caribbean Foundation to create value without having to go and beg anybody for money, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, if we had to come every day to ask somebody for 100 and 200 and 300 dollars to buy something, then it's not sustainable, mm -hmm. you know? So this is a means by which sooner or later there would be a program manager, you know, there would be an editor, and there would be a marketing person, and they'll all get paid through the advertising model that we are building, right? So, and then of course we use this to promote the arts as well, right? And to build capacity in the sector. So many people in Trinidad don't even, haven't even seen the inside of Naprima Bowl or Queen's Hall. 
-hmm. much less go to a, and sit down to a live musical production. Mm -hmm. You know? So we want to encourage and make it affordable for members of the public. Instead of you, you pay $50 to go and see a, a show in cinema, pay $40 and come and see a show, a live show with real people on a stage and help us build the sector by putting people on the stage and putting people in the audience. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and then build the sector by all the peripher peripheral things that we are doing, like building this TV station and, 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 and getting content out to the public at no cost. Mm -hmm. Show you know all the talent that the kids have in poetry, in dance, in, in you know in, in, in singing, in, in, in whatever aspects of um of you know their talent mm -hmm. that they want to promote mm -hmm. at no cost to them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so um so yeah so that that is really um creating vision in value and money and knowing how to build a business that creates both, mm -hmm. and we should be okay. Yeah. Marlon, a lot of businesses uh, literally collapse overnight. And part of that collapse overnight is not necessarily the loss of customers, but the expenses have run away um, more than, than the income in, in, in that they were not managing or monitoring both the income and the expenses. Why is the cash flow projections? Why is uh, money management important? Why is it an important component of business experience? I'm glad you asked that, Darren, because it is actually something that we see quite a lot that contributes to the failure of businesses, especially startups. Um, we, we sometimes think that a cash flow projection is really sort of like, um, you know, a, a summary kind of thing of how much money you want to spend, you, you think you might spend on how much money you think you might make. And you enter into financial commitments. So you may take some stuff on credit or you may have, you know, internet bills, phone bills, uh, and so on to pay recurring expenses that um, you think you could pay and then you realize you can't pay it. And then you start, um, you know, you start running down your, your inventory and so on just to pay your bills and then you end up with nothing and then you can't run your business. Mm -hmm. So I have found that, again, in, in our companies, you really need to write stuff down and you have to write it down in a sort of a, established format. Mm -hmm. So your cash flow projections is not the same every month. You might have the same internet bill every month. But if let's say that you're a carnival based company, January, February, you know, um, and maybe March is your is your biggest time of the year, but October is not. So you have to understand the seasons of your business and how much money or how much product can you realistically move in those seasons. So every month is a different month. And you have to anticipate for the highs and the lows in your business. Mm -hmm. And you have to write that down and pay attention to it. So you know when a slow period is coming up. You know when a fast period is coming up. And you have to then balance your expenditure so that you have money from the, you know, from the fast periods to tide you over in the low periods. So you don't spend out all the money in the fast periods and then you have no money to tide you over in the low periods. So that's really, really very important, you know, in understanding your, your business as it, you know, as you do business for the entire year, month to month, even week to week, because there would be seasons in your business based on the time of the year. Um, the second thing you have to do is you have to keep proper financial records. So you may, you may be going along well, and then you bust a tire in your car, and you have to find $500 to buy a tire, right? And if you don't have that $500, you're taking it from somewhere. You're taking it from some critical part of your business. You know? So you may have an order to fill, and you need to go and buy them goods. But in order to buy the goods, you have to fix the tire. So you take some money from the goods. And then you, know, you don't have enough money to buy the goods now, so you can only do half the order. And it's a never-ending cycle. So you have to really document every single expense, expected or unexpected, in your company every month and understand which ones are recurring, which ones were emergency, and categorize them. And if you realize that this month it was a tire, but next month it might be you know, um, a machine breakdown, or the following month it might be something else, you really have to put in a contingency now of $500 every month to be able to, um, you know, to, be able to cater for those expenses. So, Proper documentation in an established format is critical for you to 
see that financial snapshot of your business at any point in time. Um, in Native Caribbean Foundation, when we budget for a show, we actually budget for um, flash drives um, to put the show on. We budget for batteries in case the, the bowl happened to run out of batteries and they need 10 batteries for uh, uh, you know, the body packs that we have it somewhere, right? Or that we could just send somebody to go and get it. So we budget for every single little thing. And as the show evolves year after year, we understand how to adjust our expenses. So we have two columns in our budget. We have the, 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 the estimated expense, and then we have the actual expense. So every time an actual expense exceeds the estimated expense, it affects the profit. If, it decrease, if it's under it, it also affects the budget positively. So um, it's a very, very accurate, fine-tooth comb sort of documentation on what the expenses of the show would be and you know, how, how we anticipate um, it affect, that it affects our profit margin at the, end of the, at the end of the show or at the end of the event. So it is critical, critical, I can't overstate that, it's critical to have proper financial documentation in order to have proper financial management. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My last one was thank you. It was great to be here. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's not often that I get to preach the gospel of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I say this is my, the first time that I'm getting this public pulpit to stand on and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and preach that entrepreneurship dream, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I, I really want to thank you for this. Well, I'm certain that some of your robust thoughts would resonate mm -hmm. with our entrepreneurs, um, both upcoming and present. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Robert. Next time the interview will have to be about five hours. Eh? We, have no, we have no problem with that. We have no problem. Total questions still yet to be answered. Yes. Yes. Yes.